Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, May 11th, 2017. I'm Keith Tebow. Tonight we examine why city residents should take part in the annual city census. And we also look at details of another first time home buyer program. But first, let's check out the news headlines of the week. As we bring in again this week, Will Richmond, the digital news editor at the Four of a Herald News. Will, how are you? Welcome back. I'm good, Keith. How you doing? I am well. It looks like over the past few weeks, we've been uh, spending a lot of time on the mayor versus Froed front. And yes, we're going to do it again this week. Uh, last week, as we recorded the show, the Redevelopment Authority was uh, setting a meeting for Friday, last Friday, to uh, consider the mayor's proposal that the Redevelopment Authority uh, end its contract with the Four of Office of Economic Development. Well, Froed, uh, rather the Redevelopment Authority, voted not to do that last Friday, but also the mayor set into motion late last week and early this week uh, more action against uh, Froed. We did mention last week that the city had shut down two levels of the parking garage on 3rd Street, which uh, Froed oversees. And this Monday, the city uh, officially uh, gave notice to Froed that they were going to be evicted from their offices at Government Center. First, we'll talk about that eviction and what led up to it. Yes, yeah, certainly um, the, the mayor uh, and his legal counsel contends that the that Froed owes the city for at least three years of back rent, uh, totaling over $100,000. And um, without this payment and certainly with everything else going on between the two bodies, the uh, corporation counsel for the city, Joe Macy, issued a notice to uh to vacate uh this earlier this week on monday so it seems froed was already prepared for this uh executive uh vice president ken fiola said that when these talks started up the organization started renovating space in the cherry and web building mm -hmm. which is owned by froed uh to move in there so um you know, as as this sort of head-to-head -head battle goes on between the mayor's office and Froed, it looks like in the end Froed is moving to a new home and there might be some vacant space on the sixth floor of Government Center pretty soon. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in this day and age of social media and uh, access to news items 24-7, uh, Mayor uh, Correa um, has once again taken to social media to discuss uh, his thoughts coming right from his mouth. Uh, about uh, this situation with Froed. He posted this on Facebook yesterday. Let's take a look. Another mayor's news flash here for you. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Froed and the and the, the battle, the battle that seems to be taking place between my office and, and that office. I want you to know it's not a battle. You know, we sit here, we're trying to make the best decisions for you, the taxpayers. So I've got a, I've got a duty to you. Uh, so when we looked at this and, and whether or not we were gonna fund Froed going forward, uh, we made a decision that uh, based on three main factors. Number one, they owe the taxpayers, they owe us, the city of Fall River, $113,000 in back rent. They haven't paid in three years their back rent for the last three mayors. That's a big problem. Uh, so we sent them an eviction notice. If they want to pay it, great. We can negotiate a new lease. If they don't, then they do have to leave the building. Uh, and that would happen with anybody out there that has a tenant. If your tenant doesn't pay you for three years, at some point you got to say, okay, what's going on here? That's what we did. Number two, um, they have the Cherry and Webb building in downtown that they own. Poet owns the Cherry and Webb building. Uh, they owe $1.8 million on their first position mortgage holder and $1.5 million to the second position mortgage holder. We were made aware that they had never made a payment on the second mortgage position. It was due in 30 days, the full 1.5. They didn't have it. They sent a letter asking for forgiveness of that loan of money, uh, of that loan amount. Uh, and of course, that was uh, denied, and they're still trying to negotiate what the heck is going to go on with that 1.5. But the bigger problem, the moral problem for the city, is we give them $300,000 a year to give out small business loans. So those people that are getting loans from Froed expect that, expect that Froed is, uh, is paying their bills, right? So if you get a mortgage or you get a loan and you all of a sudden say, hey, I don't want to pay it, well, guess what? We can't figure out that Froed is, is taking $1.5 million loans and they're never paying it. So that's basically like if you get a, a mortgage on a three-tenement home, uh, you don't pay your mortgage, you don't pay your, your uh, taxes because they're a nonprofit, but you're collecting all the rents and putting it in your pocket. That's what's happened here. That's not fair to the taxpayers. That's not fair to the public. So we're not comfortable with that. So we're going to be taking that $300,000 in CDBG funds that they receive from the city of Fall River. And then finally, and probably most importantly, is uh, the garages, the parking garages. So we unfortunately had to shut down two floors of parking garages in the city of Fall River uh, because of lack of maintenance. 
they've, they, they've been uh, maintaining or trying to maintain and have that management contract for a long time. Uh, and under that management contract, they're supposed to maintain that property uh, and make sure that the property is running well. The parking garages lose money every year. They haven't maintained it. They only have $75,000 in a maintenance account after 20 years. Uh, and and the, and the garages have to be shut down due to lack of maintenance. That's a big problem. We're losing money every single day now. Uh, there's about, I don't know, 100 spots that now are not accessible. Uh, where are those people going to park? These are all problems that Froet has created for themselves. Those are the three legitimate problems that exist there, and that's the reason why we're making this decision. Well, there you go, Will. The mayor uh, on his Facebook page yesterday, again, uh, being highly critical of Froet, not only mentioning what uh, the city's view is on what they owe in terms of rent to the city, but also sort of uh, implicating Froet and not being um, a good business person, if you will, if they're willing to, as he says, if they're loaning out $300,000 worth of loans um, and asking people to pay those back, that you would expect that Froway would also pay its bills. How do you, re how do you re see that, that statement? Well, you know, certainly the mayor has his position in this race, uh, you know, or as he likes to say, the, the non-battle that's taking place here. Mm. Um, you know, I, I think that Froed has a different view of this. I, I, I believe there may be some agreements that uh, regarding the Cherry and Webb building is related to payments uh, that may be owed. Uh, you know, there's some very old documentation. And as we actually sit here talking today on Thursday afternoon, our uh, City Hall reporter, Joe Good, is, is reviewing those documents and talking with people on both sides about those, that type of information. So, um, you know, the, the mayor has made his has made his position known. He yeah. he wants to take over economic development in the city. And if now it's reached the point that he hasn't been able to do this to the redevelopment authority, he's going to start making the moves to push throw it out. And, um, you know, I think there are some legitimate concerns related to the garage. You know, there are some damages there. It does not appear to have been upkept. Uh, I personally walked through it earlier this week. You could see holes through the concrete deck in. Uh, there's metal plates covering sections. Um, so that that is a legitimate problem uh, that should, probably needs to be fixed as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, while the mayor knew that this was um, – the garage was in this condition, no action was taken until this situation happened with Broad as well. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be a lot of political gamesmanship taking place here. And, uh, you know, we'll see in the end what, what benefits the taxpayers uh, – through this process. Right. We uh, also hope to reach out to Froet officials. Uh, again, the mayor posted something um, on his Facebook page. We're just reporting what uh, the mayor has said, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Froed as we go forward. One other uh, item I want to bring up on uh, this week's headlines is uh, the Herald News this week reported on the city of Fall River's uh, nuisance ordinance, and that since the ordinance was enacted back in 2010, that the police department here in Fall River has um, addressed and identified some 26 properties across the city that it's deemed as, as uh, falling under this nuisance ordinance. For, for people, Will, just talk a little bit about the ordinance, what it means, and what did uh, the Herald News uncover? The ordinance uh, has been in effect now since, or, or the first tenants, first citations were issued in 2012, I, I believe. Um, essentially, we're okay. Apparently, we're having some technical difficulties. Um, as you all right, we're having some technical difficulties. Other types of things. All right, Will. Apparently, we're having some technical difficulties with you. Uh, we will leave you be uh, for this week, and we'll look forward to having you next week. Apparently, uh, but uh, what Will was uh, mentioning is that the city council passed an ordinance, a nuisance ordinance. Uh, to allow a police department to have more teeth in terms of um, ha uh, addressing problems in our neighborhoods. And the police department identified some 26 properties um, in that time uh, that included um, uh, handing out warnings and even some fines of upwards of $1,000 or more uh, concerning uh, the, um, this nuisance ordinance and trying to get our, our neighborhoods safer and our neighborhoods uh, more livable uh, for city residents, and that was the gist of the Herald News article from uh, earlier this week. The Herald News also reported, sort of in a related, um, related report, 
that uh, current city councilor Steve Camara, who owns a number of properties in uh, the uh, city of Fall River, uh, housing properties, and, and, and Will is joining us again. Hopefully we have a better connection, Will. Talk about the story concerning uh, city councilor um, Steve Camara and the allegations that he actually tipped off some of his uh, residents of potential police activity. Sure, uh, you know, as we were reviewing some of the properties on the 26 properties that you mentioned that were on this list, one of them is owned by uh, Councillor Camara. And as we reviewed some of the police reports that go along with those complaints, one of them, a tenant indicated to police as they came to, in to do an investigation at the property that uh, you know, the tenant was sitting out on a front step. She told them uh, that she wasn't surprised that they were there, that she had gotten the call that they were coming. And, um, you know, so, and when the police went into the home, there was nothing, no, nothing to be found. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Camara has denied that he tipped off the tenants. Um, so, you know, where that stands is between the police and, and Councilor Camara mm -hmm. right now, it would seem. But, right. uh, you know, we'll see where that goes go going forward. Right. Just an interesting tidbit as the Herald News doing its investigation into the uh, nuisance ordinance here in the city of Fall River. All right, Will, what's coming up over the next few days? Sure, this weekend we'll have uh, full coverage of the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth graduation as we begin the graduation season mm -hmm. here in the region. And uh, we'll also have a story on a local bakery that uh, decides to kind of take homage to mom every Mother's Day. So oh. we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about that on Sunday. Sounds great. All right, Will, we'll talk again next week. Take care. All right, have a good weekend, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Fall River Career Center. Assistant Manager, Dollar Tree Stores, located at 529 Quarry Street, is in need of a full-time assistant manager, responsible for opening and closing the store and maintaining a high level of good customer service. Job number 8926557. Product Development Engineer, Phillips Lighting, located at 631 Airport Road in Fall River, is looking for a full-time product development engineer to develop new products using the latest technologies and resources and provide technical assistance on multiple projects. Job number 892-2881. Certified Nursing Assistant. Kindred Healthcare, located at 1748 Highland Avenue, is looking for a full-time certified nursing assistant to provide basic nursing assistance and assist residents with daily living activities. Job number 892-6805. Boston Market, located at 3230 12th Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Restaurant Cook Assistant Backup, job number 892-6300. General Manager, job number 892-6302. Restaurant Associate Cashier, job number 892-6291. Restaurant Dishwasher Utility Associate, job number 892-6293. For more information on these or other positions, visit frcmedianews.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. Since the election season started last month, we'd like to keep you updated as to who is considering a run for a political office here in Fall River. Since last week's show, there have been no new candidates seeking nomination papers for the office of mayor or city council. In the school committee race, incumbent Joseph Martins took out his papers for re-election this week, the only incumbent so far to do so. Earlier this spring, school committee member Gabe Andrade told FRC Media News that he would not seek re-election due to family issues. Board of Election Commission Chairperson Liz Camara and her staff are working on gathering the results of this year's city census. Although the census forms were mailed out later than usual, Kamara says she is pleased with the results thus far. So far, the returns have been good. They're coming in every day. Uh, we're at the markets collecting them at the boxes. So if anyone wants to drop it off at their service desk, it's on the back of the form where you can drop it off. 
and uh, hope that it continues because we need to have it done soon. Uh, you know, there's an election coming up in September, so we need to get our voting list up to date. Tamara says the delay in mailing out this year's census forms were due to the vendor's mailing schedule, which placed the city's request later on its list than in prior years. The Diocese of Fall River has launched its Catholic Charities Appeal, an annual fundraising event that is now in its 76th year. The money raised is used to finance the diocese's vast social service programs. Diocese Director of Development Jim Campbell explains the mission of this year's campaign. The theme for this year's Catholic Charities Appeal is taken from Scripture. It's taken from Matthew 25, um, wherein uh, Jesus uh, is questioned by his disciples about when did we see you hungry, Lord, or when did we see you in prison? And he says to them, whatever you did for the least of my brothers, you did for me. Uh, so this year we, we sort of took that as a theme and the, the overall theme of the campaign is whatsoever you do. Not so much whatever you did, but whatsoever you do, present and future. Uh, and that really is the predicate for why people would want to support Catholic Charities because they feel it's part of their Christian duty to care for those in need. FRC Media News also asks, what is the diocese goal this year? We don't really set numerical goals every year. Our, our goal is to increase by whatever percentage. Some people can give $25, and uh, just the other day we received a check for $25,000 from uh, an individual. So the capacity to give or the inclination to give is really broad across the diocese. Um, as I said, last year, $4.6 million. If we're able to increase that by 10%, will cross the $5 million threshold, and that will certainly be uh, a boost to these uh, many charities that are supported by it. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. So we have Jacob here, and he is almost six years old, and he's quite scared. He came to us on May 4th. So he's going to be an amazing cat. As you can see, he will settle down. He's going to be lovable. He's going to be sweet. He's going to be friendly. He did not scratch me. He didn't hiss at me. He's just scared. So, and once he calms down, his pupils will go back to normal. So he's a beautiful cat, as you can see. He has beautiful size. He's very healthy. So he is here at Forever Paws, and we're located on 300 Linwood Street in Fall River, Mass. And... You can also go online at fallriver.com. So this is Ivy. She's a five-year-old dash hound. Um, she came to our shelter at the end of March. And um, she's just a really sweet girl. We do have her with no kids because she can just be a little timid with strangers at first. That looked her over. She does have a um, skin alopecia, but it's nothing medically wrong with her. It's strictly cosmetic. Um, whoever tried to breed her before basically was trying to get a certain color and that was the result. She's really sweet, it's, you know, she just takes a little time to warm up to people. And you can come see her at Forever Paws every day except for Wednesday, 11 to 4. We're at 300 Linwood Street, Fall River Mass. A first time home buyers program is scheduled for early next week. Sponsored by the city's community development agency, the program is headed by first-time homebuyer counselor George Tripp. We asked Mr. Tripp what homebuyers can expect at either of the two planned seminars. Right off the bat, the main concern is somebody having good enough credit to be able to purchase. We don't all have cash to go out and buy. I don't think, I don't know anyone that has, but anyway, that being the case, they're going to learn the, the steps that they want to take to get their credit. First and foremost, learn about your credit. If there is, uh, there may be somebody that has um, a name similar to yours or a social security number that's similar to yours, and it could be showing up on your credit, and uh, you want to make sure nothing negative is there that doesn't belong to you. And it will take you through the process that you take in order to get these things off that, that are not your credit problems. Um, you work hard to get your credit built up and have a good credit rating, so you want to know what steps to take to take care of that first and foremost. Real estate agents will also be on hand to help seminar participants with the home buying process. 
And Tripp says that these professionals prefer to work only with first-time home buyers who have already been pre-approved for a mortgage. Because the market is real tight right now, and uh, uh, they, they can't be running in circles for somebody that doesn't know even if they're eligible for a mortgage or anything like that. So, yes, they'll talk to a real estate agent, um, but they really want to make sure that they are pre-approved. So, you, number one, you're going to hear from the credit people. Number two, you want to get pre-approved with uh, the participating lender, who this time is Southern Mass Credit Union. And they're part of the uh, Fall River New Bedford Housing Partnership. And they all do a great job when they uh, participate. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can catch FRC Media News Thursday and Fridays at 6 p.m. and online via our website, frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Happy Mother's Day to the mothers in Fall River, and thanks for watching.